Yeah. What's his state of mind at this point? His state of mind is that he's hopeful, prayerful, that the jury understood the arguments and the way the case unfolded. The federal trial against R&B singer-songwriter R. Kelly could soon be coming to an end as the case is now in the hands of the jury. As you can see from our Court TV deliberation clock, the jury's out six hours, 52 minutes and counting. Uh, now they've been going over the facts of this case, all of the evidence they've been presented with, and it is a lot. This is quite a voluminous case going back a number of years. Now, six weeks of testimonies with this jury sat through. There were a total of 50 witnesses they heard from. Hundreds of exhibits were put into evidence in many hours of the opening statements, closing arguments, followed by rebuttal by, of course, the uh, federal government and the jury instructions, finally, from the judge. Now, the Grammy Award-winning artist is facing nine federal charges, including racketeering and sex trafficking, and he must wait as the jury is deciding his fate. Let's bring in now Court TV legal correspondent Julia Janae. She's standing by live for us outside of the federal courthouse in Brooklyn with an update. Julia, good afternoon to you. We understand the jury asked another question. This makes number three. Share with us what you can about that, please. Good afternoon, Julie. That's right. We have our first note of the day. It makes number three that we've heard from the jury uh, since the beginning of deliberations, which started around 1 o'clock, 1.40 on Friday. What they want is clarification on an Illinois statute. They said in that note, we, the jury, need clarification on Illinois Criminal Code 5.10-1, they say that a difference between and or or is making it difficult for them to make a decision in that case. And this relates to what you see on your screen, which is a count one racketeering act three of the indictment that re references Jane Doe number three, who testified as Sonia. And in that, basically they are asking, uh, the count is asking this jury to decide if he secretly or deceitfully can find someone against their will. It's the kidnapping charge in this case. And this jury is really astute because they are comparing it to the actual Illinois criminal code. In that criminal code, they uh, don't put the word and, they put the word or. The indictment actually says that two elements are, uh, you have to either prove one or the other. The indictment says you have to prove one, and then it says and, and moves on to the next one. They want a clarification on which one it should be. So very detailed, very astute of this jury to notice that difference, and the court is working on how they are going to word their answer to this jury on that point. Oh, wow. Uh, that, that is a smart jury, as you pointed out, Julia, uh, which is great. That's what both sides want. Uh, certainly jurors who are paying attention, being very careful and meticulous with their deliberations and making sure they're applying the, the correct law to, to the facts. Uh, tell us, please, we know you said this is note number three. Uh, so would you explain for us what the other notes were, if you would kind of go back uh, to Friday when this jury first went out? Sure. First, relating to this note today, there were some other exhibits that this jury asked for. They want transcripts of two former employees, Nicholas Williams and Tom Arnold. They were prosecution witnesses in this case who took to the stand to testify about the rules that R. Kelly had for people who worked with him, that they could not have any interaction with the female guests that there was sometimes a blackout order. We heard that from Nicholas Williams, where they couldn't go to the other rooms where those women were. And if Kelly's wife was around, they had to get a note that said important to him immediately. So these jurors wanting to see the transcript of that from court. Sometimes we see a read back in other cases, but in this case, the, the judge is going to allow them to have the court reporter's transcript from testimony given to this jury in the deliberation room. Last week, what we heard from them, two notes, but one was really the only one of substance. And in that one, they asked for the floor plan of the Chicago Tracks studio, which was the North Larrabee Road Street uh, studio in Chicago uh, that the defendant worked in, but also lived in. There were bedrooms inside of that studio. They also wanted a stipulation that related to Jane Doe number three, her relatives and friends, 
who uh, did not come into court, but the prosecution read into the record their stipulations. They also wanted Jane Doe number five's letter to her brother and a full transcript of Sonia's testimony, Jane Doe number three. So a couple of things relating to Jane Doe number three. She is the one who allegedly was kidnapped by the defendant when in 2003 she traveled to Chicago to interview him, stayed in that studio, was in a room, says that she was kept there, locked in for days by a member of Kelly's entourage and uh, wasn't able to leave, she alleges, and that she was sexually assaulted while drugged there. It's part of her testimony. The defense claims that she was not there for that reason, that there's no proof, nothing corroborating it as far as a rape kit and a police report. And this jury now wanting to see those uh, people who she may have talked to at the time, which are really the extent of what the prosecution had to corroborate that it happened in 2003, Julie. Mm, I gotcha. Uh, Julia, thank you for all of that. Uh, tell us, please, as, as everyone is waiting for this jury to come back, what are you seeing outside of the courthouse? I know many days that you've been reporting. We've sometimes heard music being played, many supporters for R. Kelly. Who's there now, please? Really, everyone's watching and waiting. You are seeing a lot of media. There are tents up all along this sidewalk that's across from the front entrance of the courthouse. Typically, we watch to see if the prosecutors are going to walk in, the defense attorneys. Today, we didn't notice the prosecution walk in in their normal entrance and arrival. Uh, all three of them usually walk together with a marshal. Also, the defense attorneys didn't come in today until they got word that there was a note. So they got in about 30 minutes to 45 minutes after the start of the day when we believe jury deliberations start at 930. But it's not the typical situation where we come into the courtroom the judge tells the jury to start deliberating again and then things go off the record. Really, we come in and we wait. So that's what we're seeing today. It's a little quieter than we normally see out here, but th things will likely uh, ramp up as the day gets closer to the end. I know you'll keep an eye on that jury room. Julia Janae live for us in New York City. Thank you so much for that update.